Today, I want to talk about what should be one of the big motivators for the 12C upgrade. For anyone who works with partitioning, the changes to global index maintenance will be a godsend. If you haven't upgraded to 12C yet, you will after seeing this. Just to make sure that we are all on the same page at the manual, I'll spend a moment describing the theory of global indexes. Remember, all indexes on a partition table are either local or global. A local index is partitioned with the same strategy as the table. So a key in any one index partition will point to a row in a matching table partition. And it is absolutely impossible for a key in one index partition to point to any other table partition. A global index is not partitioned on the same strategy, and it may indeed not be partitioned at all. So any key in any global index partition could point to a row in any table partition. What's the difference? Well, in terms of query performance, a local index is in fact many separate indexes. This is efficient if your search predicate includes the partition key, but it's awful if it doesn't. Potentially, you could end up having to search thousands of index partitions. Global index searches, however, are always fast. The problem with global indexes comes with maintenance. Local indexes will survive partition DDLs. You can drop a table partition and at the same time drop the matching index partition. No problem. With a global index, however, if you drop the table partition, you invalidate the entire global index. So now we'll take a look at the detail of the problem of 11G partition DDLs. Table partition DDLs will cascade to local index partitions, no problem at all. The issue is that your global indexes will be broken. Here's a simple example. I'll create a table, MP2, range partitioned on higher date using interval partitioning, one partition per day, just based on a copy of the scott.emp table. Table created, and if you look at the partitions I've got, there we are, 14 partitions. I'll create an index, and note that this will be a global index on the employee name column. Check out the status of my indexes, and there it is, and it's valid, no problem. But what if I do a partition maintenance operation? Alter table M2, drop partition. Doesn't matter which, but drop that partition there. No problem with the DDL, but what's happened to my global index? Oh dear. This is potentially disastrous. Until I rebuild, any query that would have used that index is now going to perform dreadfully. And worse still, if it's a unique index, I can't do any DML either until I rebuild the index, like so. After the rebuild, everything is fine again. But that rebuild might take hours, and during that period, performance is seriously degraded. There is, in 11G, a way around this problem. We can use a different syntax when we drop the partition. I'll drop a different partition this time and add the keywords update global indexes. And now we see that the index has survived. But the problem with using the update indexes clause is the DDL becomes a DML redo and undo are generated, and the DDL may in fact take hours to run. This is because under the covers, when you append update global indexes to the partition DDL, Oracle is in fact deleting every row in the partition, and only when that partition is empty does it actually get dropped. And this may make it totally impractical. So for this reason, many DBAs are quite simply terrified of global indexes because of the effects on manageability and availability of your tables.
12c fixes the global index problem completely. Syntactically, you execute the partition DDL absolutely as normal. But there is no delay, there is no generation of redo, no generation of undo, and incredibly, your indexes, your global indexes, remain usable, and there's no need for any rebuild. Now, I am in fact using 12c here. Current release 12.102. And I issued the command update global indexes, exactly the same syntax as previously. What has actually happened, however, was very, very different. And you can't tell in this little example, but that DDL will go through instantaneously, even if the partition I've dropped has billions of rows. How does that work? It's because the index is not invalidated. It is simply flagged as containing what are called orphaned entries. You can see that here. Select index name status orphaned entries, a new column in 12c, from user indexes. And look at that. My name I index has remained valid, but now has orphaned entries. From now on, if a query hits a key pointing to a row in the dropped partition, it is simply skipped. It's that simple. Then, the index is cleaned up, the orphan keys removed, asynchronously with respect to the DDL that caused the problem. Two ways of doing it. There is an overnight job that runs in your maintenance slot. There it is. Select job name, run count next run date and DBS scheduler, where job name like GIDX. There's the job. PMO deferred GIDX main job. And in my database it's run 17 times because I happened to create this database about 17 days ago. And the next run, 0200, the beginning of tonight's maintenance schedule. And at that point, the index will be cleaned up. It's this job that takes the hit of passing right through the global index, removing all the orphan keys. Or, if for some reason I don't want to wait until that job is run, I can at any stage execute dbmspath.cleanupgidx, and that will now pass through the index, cleaning it up. And we can see now the orphan keys have indeed been removed. To wrap up, the implementation in 12c of asynchronous global index maintenance is a huge technical advance and a huge change in behavior. Note that it is enabled automatically. The moment you upgrade, your partition DDL behavior will change hugely. The end result, there is no longer any need to be frightened of global indexes. You can revisit your entire indexing strategy and replace all those local indexes that you are forced to use for manageability reasons with global indexes. And that can have astronomical benefits for performance and should be a huge driver to motivate the 12C upgrade. And it has to be said that Oracle really should have implemented it like this 20 years ago.